Welcome to our lesson about the mixer window. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the different parts of the mixer window and how to customize it to make it just right for your work. The mixer looks like a traditional analog mixing console. As you can imagine, it's pretty convenient to have all the mixing channel controls for each track next to one another once you've finished recording and editing. You open the mixer under Devices, Mixer. Shortcut key is F3. Now right-click in an empty area of the mixer, not on the title bar, and select Always on Top. This will keep the mixer window open once you click away from it. Otherwise, it'll just disappear if you click elsewhere in the Cubase interface. This strip of tools on the left is called the Common Panel. It gives you a bunch of controls that affect all channels in the mixer. And, of course, it's also pretty convenient for reorganizing your view, so you can make efficient use of your monitor space. Up on top here, we've got what's called the Routing Panel. The routing panel shows all the input and output bus assignments and also has gain controls for each channel. The mixer is divided up into three sections. All of your inputs will appear on the left. In the middle section is a channel for each track. And the outputs appear on the right. Click here to see the extended mixer. And click here to hide the routing panel. Here's the toggle to open the extended mixer. Let's click on that to see what the extended mixer looks like and the Extended Mixer panel pops up. The Extended Mixer shows in certain send settings, effects, EQ settings, etc. for audio, group channels. You'd show the Extended Mixer when you need a total overview of all effects, sends, and inserts, just so you can see at a glance what's loaded where. Let's close the Extended Mixer now by clicking on this arrow here. Now let's show the input buses by clicking on this toggle to hide and show the input channels. Each section of the mixer, the input channels, the channels for each track, and the output channels are separated by this dashed line. We can resize each portion of the mixer by just hovering your mouse over the dashed line and waiting until the cursor turns into a double-sided arrow, and then drag left or right as you need. This channel is set to narrow. I can expand it by clicking this toggle. When you're mixing, you probably don't need the input channels available. And to save space, you can hide them by clicking on this toggle in the common panel. Now dragging the channel fader up and down will adjust the volume of signal for each channel. The channel meters indicate the output levels for our tracks. Let's play. and stop playback. If you want to get the fader back to the default zero decibels of gain, just control or command click in the fader area. These little numbers show the peak meter value, in effect the loudest level of signal so far on that channel. You can click in this area to reset the meter during playback. Let's stop playback. If your levels on each channel are too high, this area here will light up in red. If any digital distortion is generated from the levels being too high, you'll see a red light with the word clip on it light up at the bottom of the channel. Let's just boost our levels up so we can generate a clip. With all our levels up, I suspect we will clip the output. Here's the clip indicator. Let's stop playback. Each channel has a clip light like this. You can reset that light simply by clicking in it. Now let's take a quick look at this little arrow that appears at the top of each channel strip. This lets you toggle the channels to narrow status and click it again to toggle your channel back to wide status. When you use your channels in the narrow mode, this saves you a little bit of screen space. And each channel has a downward pointing arrow too. Click on this to set the channel to can hide status. Once a channel is in can hide status, a little slash will appear in the middle. Any channels that are set to can hide status are able to be quickly hidden by using a control in the common panel. 
Click here to hide any channels that are set to Can Hide status. The toggle lights up in orange when channels are hidden. Click it again to show those channels. At the top of each channel strip is the panning control area. We looked at this briefly in our lesson on mixing in the first section of this course. Panning is how you arrange your music in two-dimensional space if it's in a stereo mix. It can be balanced in the middle of the left and right speakers, it can lean to the left or the right, or it can come only out of the left or right speakers. Just drag the line to the right or to the left to change the pan amount. The amount of the pan is indicated by this number here. R1 means it's panned just a tiny bit right of center. L45 is panned halfway out to the left. To keep the signal balanced in the middle of the left and right speakers, you need to leave your panning at C or center. Control or command click anywhere in the panner area to restore back to the center. To get your signal only in the left or right speaker, just drag the control all the way out, either to the left or to the right. This position here, R, indicates that this channel's sound will only come out of the right speaker. Let's control or command click to restore to center. If we press the M button here, we will mute this channel. Press it again to unmute. Press the S button to solo a channel. And this will mute all other channels, or at least those without S selected. You can have several tracks soloed or muted at one time. Use the common panel controls to clear all mutes and solos quickly. Sometimes you might want a track to always play. If that's the case, Option or Alt click on the solo button to put the track in what's called solo defeat mode. Notice that the letter changes from S to a D here, and that indicates that you're in solo defeat mode. What this means is that the track will always play, even if you're soloing another track. Just Alt or Option click the control again to take it out of solo defeat mode. Okay, you'll recall here that I'd maxed out all the channel faders. Let's restore these to zero. I can control or command click on each fader, or I can use a global command here, Reset Mixer, Reset Channels. I click on it and I'm prompted. Do I want to reset all the channels or just selected channels? I'm going to reset all the channels. And all our faders are quickly reset to zero. Down below, we can click these R and W buttons to activate and deactivate automation reading, R, or writing. That's the W. Underneath the W is this E button. Click this to edit the channel settings. And this is a panel where you can modify the EQ, inserts and sends, etc. Let's close the channel settings window. Beneath the E button is what's called the bypass button. You turn this on to turn off any effects you've put on this track. It's yellow when it's active. So when this button is active, you're bypassing the effects that you've applied to this channel. And when you bypass, you won't hear it. There's the record enable button, you'll recognize this, and the monitor enable button. We can toggle them on and off. Here we see the channel name and the order it appears in the project window. Now let's take a look at the common panel in more detail where you can easily adjust your view of the whole mixer. At the top of the common panel, we have a toggle to open the extended mixer, which we talked about at the beginning of this lesson. Below, we have the mute, solo, and listen activation and deactivation buttons. They basically work just like they do for individual channels, except that clicking a button here will toggle that function off for all channels. If one or more channels is muted, for example, the mute button on the common panel will be lit already. And it's white when it's lit up. Click the mute button on the common panel to unmute all channels that are currently muted. The same principle applies to the global solo and the global listen controls in the common panel. Below we have the global controls for reading and writing automation. This will activate or deactivate the read or write status on all the channels. And if one or more channels is in read or write mode, the buttons on the common panel will be lit.
Below, we've got the Reset Mixer Reset Channels button. This will reset all channels or only selected channels in the mixer. Resetting a channel means restoring it to default settings, so not only will you restore the fader to zero, but you'll deactivate all solos, mutes, EQs, inserts, and sends, effects, settings, etc. You'll also restore any panning settings to center. Below we have Copy and Paste Channel Settings controls. This lets you copy and paste channel settings from one channel to another. Just select the track that you want to copy, press the Copy button, then select the track that you're going to paste to, and click the Paste button. By the way, when a channel is selected, it's white. Clicking this button will toggle open the VST Connections panel. You'll remember that this is where we assign buses, etc., for inputs, outputs, external instruments, and so on. And don't forget about the shortcut key for that toggle, F4. The Store View and Remove View buttons let you save your mixer display as a preset, which you can later retrieve by selecting Select Channel View Set Menu. And this lets you easily access views you need for specific tasks, like audio recording and mixing. And then, of course, you can easily pull up the mixer settings that you need to perform a certain function so that you don't have to customize the mixer from scratch each time you open the window. Click the Store View button once you've got the mixer set up the way you want, type in your name, and click OK. Now you can select it from the drop-down menu of Presets. And of course, removing a preset is easy and works just like it does in other Cubase windows. Select it from the Channel View Set menu and click Remove View. Now it's no longer available. Cubase lets you show three different mixers at one time. Let's go to Devices and select Mixer 2 or Mixer 3. Then you can have a different preset in each. For example, MIDI tracks on one, outputs on another mixer, audio in a third mixer, etc. Let's set Mixer 2 to Always on top. Each mixer can be customized to store whichever presets you need. Using multiple mixers is something you'd want to do only if you've got more than one monitor available for recording. I've closed Mixer 2 and let's restore my project window. Drag up Mixer 1 and let's continue our exploration of the common panel. Here are the toggles between the narrow and wide states for all channels. Let's narrow all our channels and let's widen them again by clicking this toggle. Enable the left side here if you want to exclude your input channels from any adjustments that you make in the mixer. If you only want to apply your commands and controls here to selected channels, then enable the center button. And to exclude your output channels, enable the right button. This is a tool that lets you customize your mixer more quickly. Down below, we have settings that affect the Remove Can Hide from Target function. For example, if you want to exclude inputs from the Can Hide function, then inputs won't be hidden when you click Can Hide, and this button here will enable that. These buttons below hide from view all channels of the particular class represented by the icon. Up top, we've got Input Buses. Click here to hide and show audio channels. Below are group channels, the rewire channels. Click here to hide and show MIDI channels, then instrument channels, effects channels, and last output channels. At the bottom, click here to show all channels. And this concludes our overview of the mixer window. We'll be using many of these controls later on in this course, so you'll have a chance to practice how they really work.